What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Contractor Secrets Podcast. In today's business breakthrough, I sit down with George Hanna again. This is part two. Now, if you guys remember George's business breakthrough, uh, he was starting a contracting business kind of on the broad scale. We talked about him niching down to flooring, um, and now he's back with another curveball for me. Uh, he wants us to leave next year to a different state. Um, and he wants to run his business remotely, uh, definitely have to dive in with George on this one. And uh, I think you're going to get a lot out of, uh, our conversation and some of the, the points that I make about, you know, really building a foundation, uh, planting the roots and, uh, you know, building a, a long lasting business, uh, especially in an in industry where it thrives off of, off of the local market. So, uh, tune in another awesome business breakthrough that should help you in your business. The big question you need to ask yourself every day is, do I own a job or do I own a business? And unfortunately, the majority of contractors out there own a job. That's right. They're a slave to their own business. But the other side of the fence is so much greener. It's so much better. And that's when you're finally fully in control of your destiny, your freedom, your time. And that's what Contractor Secrets is about. It's about taking back our time, building a business with systems, standards, values, procedures, putting yourself in the driver's seat. And that's what it's about. So I'm excited. I'm happy to have you here. Let's dive into the Contractor Secrets Podcast. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Contractor Secrets Podcast. Guy, George Handenback. Now, we just talked with what two weeks ago roughly yeah roughly and uh what happened in those two weeks man you got so moving after <laughs> yeah quite, yeah man i mean you hit the ground I, uh, running. yeah I, I try not to let myself you know freeze in fear so it was it was very intimidating well, but let me I give a really quick recap because some people just jump in and i want to make sure that we're up to speed here you had initially came to me we talked about you being really kind of like a generalist um service and we discussed that it would be better if you niche down and change your business to just offering flooring not even a day later i think you you, you you told me you changed the business name did you go through with all that stuff or you are you now a flooring company so i am a flooring company but i ended up keeping the name because i mean i talked to um eric and he said it wasn't that big of a deal. And I just figured it'd be easier to just keep it. Okay. So, so uh, if if we start getting jobs and stuff like that and it's confusing, then I can change it. So let's um talk about what you did differently since, since we first started and what you did now. What, what has happened in those two weeks? All right. So when I first started, I I was doing word of mouth marketing. I was running a few ads on um, next door that didn't yeah. really get much result. Um, I was accepting any job that I got. I was doing all the work and um, I didn't really have a system set in place. I owned a job, not a business. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And Did um, you make any hires. Have you, have you, have you put on any ads? I haven't. That's what I wanted to talk to you about today. Okay. Are the um, are the ads, but um, I did hire a sales guy. Okay. So we have a sales guy right now. We need. So my whole plan is to have the sales guy sell and be a head installer. Um, I did that for a few reasons. I figured that, you know, when somebody goes to a stranger's house. And then they see them again when they install. I feel like it might make a it might make feel the client feel a little more comfortable instead of having to deal with different people all the time. Okay. Um so the plan is to have the installer be the sales guy, the head installer be the sales guy. So he gets five to seven percent based on the um profit margin that he sells and then um he gets twenty dollars an hour installing as a head installer and then i'd hire a helper for fifteen dollars an hour i don't like it you don't like it no not at all okay what do you recommend <laughs> i mean you know the way i see it is this first of all with with being a head installer 
Mm-hmm. He's got to be on the job mm-hmm. all the time. When's he going to have time to go sell? Okay. And what are you doing? Um, Operating. Operating what? The business. <laughs> What do you Just mean? There's, <laughs> no, I'm dead serious because, <laughs> because, you know, when you start up a business, what you're doing, you've got to wear a bunch of hats in order to optimize costs, to minimize risk, to train. Um, there's no reason like you should be hiring anyone else to do sales. You should be doing the sales. Is there any reason why okay. you're not going to want to be doing the sales? So my goal is to move out to South Carolina and right now I live in Maryland. Um, so wait I'm a minute, you want to run, you want to run this business from, from South Carolina that's operating in Maryland. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you just start that's, up a business in South Carolina? I'm going to do that too. Okay. Do you think, I mean, that's the goal. Look, I can I can have... give you look, I look, I want to give you I, I want to help you first. I don't want to I don't want you to think I'm 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 coming across in a, a disrespectful way. Cause everybody I love okay. your passion, man. There's something about you. Like I love it, man. You're a you're one of those people that just like you do it, dude. And that's a hard thing to come by. Um if you're trying like if you're not planning on staying here for at least two years to establish a a brand to establish a, a name, bro. I'm five years into my painting company and I mm-hmm. do a lot of it remotely from home, but there are times maybe once every six weeks or so where I know I need to go to a job. Like mm-hmm. I know I do because of something that's out of our control, a disgruntled customer, like they want the owner sometimes, you know? And, uh, that can't happen if you're in South Carolina and your company's operating in Maryland, you know, um, that makes a lot more sense why you're giving somebody a percentage and hourly, you know, um, I mean, is it possible? I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely possible, but the, 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 the quality is going to drop for sure. I mean, unless you plan on giving somebody ownership stake in what you're creating, what motivation do they have to pretty much run the business while you're miles and miles away? So the whole plan was to keep 60% of the Maryland operation. I'd I'd have um, somebody running it for me for 33% of profits. That's how much they'd get paid. Well, who's that? And then I would give... Well, I'm saying that would be the, the plan. I don't know that right, person yet. Right, but you got to realize in order for equity in a business to actually be worth something, um, it takes a couple years. I mean, it, mm. it does because you haven't established any consistency. You haven't established uh, any local presence. Right now, every customer that you get is going to be by way of generating rather than a passive approach of like if they went on Google and just saw that you had a great longstanding reputation, like that holds weight. You're in the wrong business. Like what you're trying to do would make sense if you were like a tech company or you were like a uh, like lead generating company and wanted to sell leads to other, you know, flooring contractors you wanted to qualify and sell the leads to other flooring contractors in maryland like yeah that would that would work but you're also taking responsibility for the production what if Mm -hmm. you know what if you don't have a good problem solver what if the salesperson you bring on isn't you know what if there's a what if there's an issue with the floor not being level right and and your 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 salesperson slash floor installer drops the ball you know you got a customer in maryland that has a, a floor that's uneven and you're nowhere to be found. And you're trying to do all this from over the phone. I'm like, you just come here. <laughs> and then you're like, no, I can't. I don't know what to do. You got no big corporate backing behind you to go fix that. Instead, you just have to get your insurance involved. It just sounds messy, man. 
you have no, like, I guess I could do it at this point. I've been in it for five years. I know the people running my business, like the back of my hand. I know <laughs> how they problem solve. Um, you're just too early to even think about just, just starting something up real quick and leaving. Sounds like you want to leave pretty quick. How soon do you want to leave? So I want to spend my last year at Clemson. Okay. Um, you know, I've just, I've never had that college experience. And now that I can afford it, I really want to spend the last year there to get the experience. And um, honestly, what experience are you looking for? Just. I mean, I went to a tailgate the other day, and I was like, "Wow, this is this is really what you got college hooked is on about. the tailgate." Yeah, let, I mean, me, let me be honest with you, bro. And I think you told me this, and my, I might be wrong. I talked to a lot of people. Weren't you wanting to help your parents? Wasn't that one thing that you were you were telling me was important to you? Yeah, yeah. And how old are you? Twenty three. Right. So, I I I actually lived in Gainesville. You know, you know who plays in mm-hmm. Gainesville? Mm mm. Gators, bro. Okay. Tailgating in Florida is way better than anything you've ever experienced. Just so you know, this is <laughs> like they we created tailgating here, dude. Okay. At some point, you're gonna have to make a decision. Right now, you have you're way ahead of the game. You're 23, bro. You want to start a contracting business. You want to create a legacy for yourself and, and your family. You've got the right mindset for it. Um. You can't have both worlds in when you're starting a business. If you want to be successful, you have an opportunity to create a million dollar business and you're wanting to trade that and do it maybe half ass. And I don't usually say things like that because I just want you to get the point, bro, because I like you and I want you to really get this. And you want to go to get a college experience tailgating and, and enjoying friends that you're never going to talk to again after you leave, you know, because they're going to be doing their own thing. You're not missing out on anything, bro. What you're doing right now is securing your future for your family, you know, mm. and I, I think that, that that's something that not many people grasp. A lot of people get addicted to that lifestyle. I'm not saying that's you, but you got to separate from it, bro. I, you know, I don't I don't I don't go to tailgates. I don't party. I don't even I don't even drink, dude. OK, I'm, I'm so focused on getting to where I, I can take my family with this opportunity I have to own a business and being a leader in that regard. That, that that's that's i'm so committed to that cause bro don't i mean if that's the only reason that's pulling you there bro build a million dollar business you could tailgate for the rest of your life uh with with a much more stronger foundation dude you know and i appreciate yeah, you being so- open with me and i don't want to be i don't want to come across as real i just want to help man because i think you have something here you know yeah. i really do no i absolutely appreciate it i mean this show and this whole thing is honestly has just been a blessing. It's been crazy. And I've only, you know, been on here once, but um, it's, it's really the people down here, like the people in Maryland. I, I can't start a conversation with a stranger down there. There's nobody that's like, I feel like they're here in the South. It's just, people are happier. They're, like more genuine it's easier i just felt a lot happier while visiting this place and i don't think you should start a business in maryland bro i don't think you should do it this is a freaking commitment man this is this is people's livelihoods man imagine you imagine imagine this you put out an ad to me in maryland okay i got a family got a i got a wife and a kid okay Mm -hmm. you put out an ad and you're up there and you invite me for an interview and you look me in the eye and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm starting this, uh, you know, flooring business. I want you to be a part of it. I want you to be our, our lead guy, our salesperson. And I want you to take over this role. I'm going to train you for a couple of weeks and I'm going to leave for South Carolina and you handle things from there. And I'll just uh, call you and check in. What? <laughs> what kind of stability is that? And then I go to my wife and say, hey, yeah, this guy. You know, he said he has some flooring jobs. I'm going to be doing the sales and I'm going to be, you know, uh, overseeing, you know, and he's, he's, he lives in South Carolina though. So, you know, I mean, we're going to try to work this out. Like I just, you know, what you're building with that mindset is, is, is not, it's not strong. It won't last. Honestly, I mean, if you really want best of both worlds and you like South Carolina, start it down there. Honestly, could I still 
make as much money? It's it's relative. Or you, you, if you're a good salesperson, I I could sell anything. I could mm-hmm. I can make I can make money in Alaska selling exterior paint jobs. I don't I don't care. I don't even think like that, bro. Don't ever don't ever think like that. You're in America, bro. You can make money. You know, it's just that's just the way it is, and it's all relative. It's 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 uh in correlation to living expenses. It's a little more expensive to live in Maryland as it is um, South Carolina. So costs are generally lower, usually for labor. So it's proportional, you know. Hmm. I'm just saying, man. I I mean, you know, you 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 invested in in ads. You want to be successful. You got a little money. You know, if you want to have fun, there's nothing wrong with having fun, man. And I, I'm not saying that. Don't don't change your whole lifestyle right now. It's going to be harder to start back up if you go and do your year of just like freedom. You know, I didn't have the college experience either, bro. I mean, yeah, I went to some tailgates, but I worked the whole time and I'm glad I did. I look back and I'm like, man, I'm so glad I worked and didn't just party. And, you know, I didn't make partying and, and all that stuff. My like the thing, cause I didn't get the college experience, bro. My, my family's was broke, you know, like we, we didn't have anything, you know, and I'm able to give my family now, which is the most important thing to me, whatever life they want. I retired my wife. She's, she's in the kitchen hanging out with my daughter retired she's 27 <laughs> you know? i mean retired Jeez. never doesn't have to work if she doesn't want to okay and her mother and i retired her mother too she doesn't work either wow yeah and those are the same so, I mean, value and i know you would too if you had that situation but you're young you're 23 yeah how old are you 28 you're 28. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Five years ain't much. I, mean, I started I, my business when I was your age. I start, That's when I started my painting. But that's why I'm talking to you like this, because I feel like I'm talking to my, my old self. I really do, bro. And that's just five years of a gap. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, I wouldn't totally drop uh, empathy contracting if I came out here. I'd have to be out here for a year before I can go back to school because I don't want to pay the out-of-state tuition fees. So I, I should have just told you this whole plan ahead of time, like when I first started. Yeah, yeah but it got refreshed um, when you went to the game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so, so the plan is to finish out the last semester at the University of Baltimore and then move out here. Works so you're trying to knock out a year of contracting up there while you're up there. And then, but either way, I'd say, why don't you just take school off for a year and not go to, are you in school right now at the university of Baltimore? Yeah. You are. Yeah. yeah. I, I hate you're it. You're in a tough position, bro. I will be honest. I just yeah. don't think it's wise to, to put in all energy effort uh and and get people excited especially employees that are going to be working for you you know look just to do it for a year go ahead you know just don't i don't don't get employees involved where they think that you're going to be hanging around and then you just pull a 180 on them and leave you know that's different like if you want to sell flooring jobs find subcontractors and then project manage those guys go for it for that year you know that's that that's a plan but I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't plant roots, bro. You know, I wouldn't plant roots with the idea that you're going to leave. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Sounds, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So as far as, um, okay. So I, I have, uh, I got a marketer now and right. I was wondering if I could go over my sales process with you so we can. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So uh, I saw your Instagram and you mentioned that in sales, it's communicator to stand out in sales. You have to have communication, answer common questions, and then find a need and fill it. Yeah. It sounds right? about right. So, so how we always do our estimates is we walk in and we, just talk to them. We become their friends for the first 10 minutes. And then we go through the rooms, measure everything. And I want to incorporate samples. Um, 
because I always end up. Don't ever to bring leave. samples. Don't ever do that on the first visit. No samples unless on you've, the first unless visit. you've sold unless you sold the job. Yeah, don't do okay. that. Okay. Yeah, I mean it's it's a it's a wise thing to 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 have in the car for if you sell it on the spot. But what I would frame it as once we agree on. Um, you know, once we agree on a price, cause usually with flooring, you're going to be charging labor. Uh, the reason mm -hmm. you do that is because the cost of the type of floor that they get can vary tremendously. So you don't want to be in a position where you give a price and then they pick a, you know, eight millimeter thick vinyl, you know, luxury vinyl that's $8 a square foot. And you're like, what? So typically with flooring, you only want to charge labor. Um, obviously the markup is pretty heavy because you have to factor in your costs and profit and all that stuff, which is fine. Um, but yeah, and, and you could, you know, do, do the, uh, the flooring too, but you could give them, give them an allowance with that price. Okay. So, Hey, so this price is with a $3, uh, per square foot flooring, but you know, you'd have to be a judge on that reason why I say, don't give the, uh, the, don't bring a sample is because, um, it takes away from the focus needed to, to lock in a deal. Um, you know, and, uh, I think it'd be wise to just frame it like, okay, so, you know, if we, if we get to a point where we, you know, come to an agreement, I'd be happy to bring samples by and we can go over what type of style you want and what we can install for you. Um, some people may already have samples in their house. Don't look at them or talk about them too much because again, we want to just stay focused until we get that commitment. And then we invest in, the uh you know the options it's kind of like if i off the bat came into a house with a color deck right mm -hmm. the customer no longer is focusing on the value that i'm bringing but they're more focused on what color they're going to pick yeah yeah so i would just be careful with when you bring the sample it's not saying don't bring one i'm just saying make sure that it's after you get a commitment and just ensure them like it's kind of like how we say hey we're going to do a color consultation after we you know decide on a price and we always do it that way you know we don't do the color i used to when i was new i would i would sit there for an hour and just play with colors and i'd be like dude that's, i'm here for an hour we haven't gotten anywhere and they're like okay are you going to give us a price and then i give them the price and then they were like oh you know i need to think about it i'm like i just spent an hour with you um so i learned real quick to just focus on the sale first and then and then you know just provide the solution just do it in a do it in the right order so how about we do this we walk in we measure the rooms um have a conversation with them and then they start telling us about uh whether or not they started looking at samples and then i i tell them yeah so i actually have some in the car and then i go out to get them from the car do you think that's a better idea or no i mean i mean again our goal is to sell first and then help mm -hmm. That's part of your value proposition and you're not framing it in a way that makes someone even more excited to hire you. Right. So like for me, what I would do if I go in and sell flooring, which I do, I sell flooring jobs, we do flooring. Um, so yes. first thing first is I'm going in there asking my questions, you know, what's the story? Why do you want us to install flooring today? Everyone has a reason as to why some people are moving out. Some people are moving in. Some people have a dog that peed on the carpet. Some people, uh, you know, are tired of the look. So based on that answer is how I'm going to frame the rest of the conversation. Uh, from there, I ask, you know, have you decided on a flooring yet? Have you chosen anything? Usually the answer is no. And I say, great, I have an awesome place that you can go to and you can look at flooring and I'll give you, um, and you know, their number and, uh, you know, we work hand in hand with them and they'll help you pick the perfect flooring. So I actually know of a place that I recommend all my customers to. Um, that's number two. And number three, you know, what's the time frame? I'm always asking those three questions. So first question, what's the story? Second question, options. I ask the same question with painting uh, uh, customers. Have you chosen colors? Same thing. Have, have you chosen a flooring type? And then what is the time frame? From there, yes, we can go around and we could do a measurement. But at the end of the day, really what I'm doing is I'm, I'm just really just having that conversation like you do. Um, but then from there, we're just locking in a price, man. We want to get that price taken care of before we, uh, before we tell them that we have samples. And what are the chances that you're going to have a sample uh, that, that matches what they want anyway in your car. Yeah, that's true. Um, interesting. Wow. Okay. And 
I always end the estimate with a question. Um, I always ask them, um, after you hand the final check to me or whoever you decide to hire, uh, how are you going to know you hired the right person? And the initial reaction with that is like, wow, like nobody's ever asked me that. But it also helps us gauge exactly what we needed to do so they feel like they, they spent their money wisely. I like that. That's a good question. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I have nothing good. to say. That's a great question. Yeah. So, I mean, um, you know, I just think that, uh, you know, look, man, what's most important for you right now is to, is to really dial in your plan. You know, and if mm -hmm. I'm talking to somebody who, you know, I really think you have the, the tools to be really successful. Um, you know, the college life, man, you know, I, I know what you mean. I really do. I was there. Again, I'm from Gainesville, dude. Gator country, man. Look it up. You know, our tailgates get crazy. Um, you know, but it's one of those things where in business, man, you got to go all in because people are counting on you, you know, and uh, being a leader in business is about self-sacrifice, man. Even though what we want to do is, is fun, we've got to be the ones to say no. Um, you know, and that's what I've done ever since I've been in a management position. I've always said no to certain things just because I valued this more. And now I'm at a point where it's like, that was worth it, you know, um, especially, you know, but you know, you might want to take another year off. And if you do want to enjoy that, enjoy it, man. You can't really go back after a certain point or else it'd be weird. So, you know, um, just, you know, I, I just don't think, you know, it'd be wise to develop a company with employees with, uh, you know, you know, people really counting on you if, if your plan is not to stay, because uh, that's yeah. what people look for when they want to work for a good company is longevity, stability, you know, maybe they're, they're, they're giving up other opportunity to work for you and you're planning on leaving It's kind of, kind of not right. So an option would be sell the jobs find some local subcontractors. You have no responsibility to keep them busy, which is great because as soon as you're done there, you could get up and leave, but you'll have some great experience under your belt and you can go and, and really build a, a better business when you move because you'll have that experience. So it's kind of like a trial run for you um, up there. Um, so, you know, th that's, that's an idea that if that kind of satisfies both, you know. I love that idea. Um, so in the interview, I, should I tell them that, well, of course I'm going to have to tell them, I'll tell them that this is a one to two year job. Well, that's an employee, and man. If you're talking about doing interviews, this is, that's an employee, you know, a subcontractor would be actually finding companies like, you know, yeah. guys with a van and actually reaching out to them saying, Hey, you know, I have some jobs lined up and I was wondering if you guys could take on more work. You know, finding flooring companies out there uh, on Google, Google local flooring companies. You got to realize these guys do not know how to generate leads. Chances are they're working for Lowe's, Home Depot, local flooring companies like we talked about, and they're averaging maybe $2 a, a square on these jobs, um, which is considerably low, but they take them because the volume's there. So you can offer more than what they get paid at these places to take on your work, um, which they'll appreciate. So don't worry about making a killing. You're not going to make a killing with subcontractors. Um, but my focus, my suggestion to you uh, would be to just, you know, make some money and get some experience before you leave. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I should, you think I should subcontract right off the bat and not when I leave? I think, yeah. I mean, if your goal is to leave, yeah. You know, if you're just coming in and, and getting out, bro, again, you've got to define what you want to do really, really, it's really important, you know, just mm -hmm. truly on like truly do some, like some thinking, man, you know, of like what you really want and what you want to do. I know it's hard, um, you know, but if you think about what it would be like on the other side, you have a million dollar a year flooring installation company and how good you'll feel and what that'll look like for you and your family, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's pretty. It's a pretty good life, man. It is. I, You're your it own sounds, boss. Sounds like what are you dream. going to school for? What is what are you studying there? Entrepreneurship. And or do you feel like you're you're going to be learning more next year in school than you would if you were out on your own? 
zero i learned more mm-hmm. from our conversations than i do from the last three years of classes that i've had yeah Tanner. man i would even consider dropping out i would because the amount of money that you're gonna spend on uh you know on that it's just taken away from money that you can you can earn i know the degree is probably important to you, you could probably take it online you're still are you going to class physically the the degree is worthless to me it's it's my parents oh dude uh, you know i mean you're you're in a you're in a really good, good you know it's a normal predicament many people go through this bro you know it, 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 it's the pressure you know but uh I'm sure your parents would be proud, you know, if you own a business that's successful, you know, that's all they probably want for you is, is to make sure that you're successful, you know? Yeah. I mean, I asked my mom once, uh, about four weeks ago, I was like, Hey, if I made a million dollars a year or had a degree, which one would you rather have? And she said a degree. Of course, that's, that's a, that's an, an, an older model of thinking, you know, and it's hard because that's what they did. And that's how they survived. And as a father, now I see why people do that, man. Cause it's like, Oh, I'm going to tell my kids to do what I did. Cause that's all I know that worked. And I don't want them to have to struggle. So, you know, um, it usually takes going against the grain. You know, my parents didn't have that educational background and we struggled a lot. So, you know, everyone else around me said, get a degree. And I did, I went to college, I got an associate's degree, but I worked the whole time. And I said, I have one of two choices. I can either continue this path. And I know what it looks like, you know, getting a bachelor's degree, then I got to get an internship somewhere and then make 40, 50,000 a year. But I have a bachelor's degree, but it's safe. You know, when I could learn sales, I could build my own business and, uh, I had to choose, but you know, that's even more of a reason for you to go all in and take this stuff so seriously. If you really want it, you're just in a conflicted state, man. Look what, look what it's doing. If your parents really know that you're the best thing about college for you is the tailgating, you know, it's not the learning cause you're not really learning, you know, I mean, that's an issue, you know, um, you know, it sucks dude. Cause you know, I feel like you have the, you have the will you, this is your second coaching call with me. You really want this. Um, and you could do it and you have the support around you, uh, but you have to like this waiting period of this entrepreneurship degree that leads to another degree, you know, cause that's not going to get like, there's no focus there. It's kind of like saying like, okay, my, you know, my specialty is contracting like it is with your name or your business, but well, what do you specialize yeah. in? Like you need a degree in flooring. You need a degree in, you know, site development you need a degree in painting like you have to go through the channels of learning all these different things so entrepreneurship as a whole is going to teach you business law which i'm sure one of your one of your classes are business law hiring all these things that you can you can you're, you're you should outsource as a business owner you shouldn't be doing hr as a as a business owner you should have a person who specializes in hr doing that you shouldn't be doing accounting and i'm sure you're learning accounting principles and practices dude you you should be outsourcing that you're not going to be spending your time staying up to date with the accounting code you you know you're going to have to learn payroll i'm sure you're learning payroll taxes and all what, what payroll is i don't do any of that stuff i outsource it to a software that does it for me so the the school model is not keeping up with the way business is, is moving and it never has, and you probably never will because it's just moving too fast and it's too convenient. Is that true? Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. Um, so I think one of the best things you could do is just do both until you, cause I know you're not going to turn on your parents, bro. And, and, you know, disrespect them, you know, cause they probably put you through college. So you have no choice. But my suggestion is to maybe maybe just consider um, what I said about just doing both, you know, grinding your teeth and just being a beast for the next two years, you know, foregoing the parties and build your business. Yeah. So I actually I got a full ride. So my parents didn't very nice help with it. Congrats. Um, thanks, man. So there's a lot less pressure in that aspect. I just I feel like I really need to think and, and make the decision. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, it would be wise to just, you know, consider what I said about using the marketing avenue that you just got selling Mm -hmm. the jobs, finding someone Mm -hmm. to do the jobs and then overseeing the production. Start there. Yeah. Just start there, you know, start there. And then, and then if, and if, if you find a good subcontractor and the relationship works, do it again, do it again, do it again. 
and learn and make a mistake and be okay with it and and know that you know worst case you go down to south carolina next year and you maybe take a year off of this you reflect you build your brand you take your time this ain't no rush dude don't rush it i mean that's the worst thing you do you know you're not trying to build a million dollar business tomorrow it takes time you yeah know? so was that helpful today <laughs> oh my gosh yeah man you have no idea oh bro yeah i just you know i i know i know what position you're in man i feel for you um you can do it just you know sit down with yourself man and write this stuff down get a pen and paper out write down the worst case i've do you know how many pros and cons lists i've built you know just of like any any decision like pros and cons and outweighing them um which one which one works you know so yeah i mean i feel like the only reason I'm really going to succeed is because I believe it, you know, that's just you're the, the biggest you're thing. The, like, just... here's, here's my last theory about this. When you go to school and get a degree, you're being groomed to work for somebody, even an entrepreneurship yeah. degree, you know, that's usually what it comes down to. Like, even that it's really just a business degree with a focus on owning a business, but they want you to get an internship in order to complete the degree and then you chances are you want to working for who you intern because it's convenient and you didn't really learn the risk taking aspect which you won't learn in school because the person teaching you it has never done it chances are okay and the risk taking acts aspect of owning a business comes down to belief that's it it's belief and <clears throat> ignoring everyone else's opinions around you because entrepreneurs bro are like crazy people they go against the grain dude i'm insane if you think about it like i really am <laughs> I, I really am i mean i literally left an eighty thousand dollar a year off loan officer job full benefits 401k a profit sharing matching all this stuff i never signed up for the 401ks ever in any of the companies that offered it and they all looked at me crazy because usually in the corporate world you know, it's usually a meeting. They sit you down. It's a sales pitch. They sit you down in front of the director and they give you this nice investment portfolio and they talk about the 401k. And in my head, I'm thinking, I'm not doing this because I will not, I will not stay. And I didn't want, I, number one, I didn't want my money tied up. And number two, I didn't want to get comfortable, you know? So I never signed up for it. And they always like, why didn't you sign up? Oh, I just, you know, I'm not ready. And in my head, I'm like, I'm going to leave to start my own business one day. So like for me, I'm crazy in the eyes of everyone else. Like, man, this crazy guy left this secure job to go start a painting business. Um, you know, but risk taker, man, not everyone succeeds. It takes a lot of discipline, dude. You know, it's not, it's not going to be easy. It's, it's, it's actually one of the hardest things you could do. Creating your own income free, from thin air. You know? So... Yeah. Don't, don't think it's going to be easy, bro. Cause that's why I say like, if you know, that's why I came at you a little hard earlier with the tailgating thing. It's like, you can't have that mentality going into this, bro. Like you gotta be, a, you gotta yeah. be an absolute dog when it comes to business. Like nothing's more important to you. It's like a, it's like a baby. Like, you know, you knew somebody had a baby and they had the baby and like, yeah, well, I, you know, I, I want to take a year off and go, you know, enjoy the college life you would look at that person like no you need to take care of the baby yeah yeah <laughs> so you know just give me sure. some analogies man i really hope that uh that helped let me know i hope i have you back on here man i'd love to keep chatting about it when you come to a new conclusion of what direction you want to go into okay oh you can bet on that you can bet on that yeah yeah keep me updated sure. man i gave you some gave you some things to think about um do you have any other questions before we wrap up no, I, I feel like we uh, we covered enough to keep me busy for the next few weeks. Yeah, man. Keep me updated. Find those subcontractors. Do do yourself a favor. Just just try this today because I like action the day you hear it. Right. And I know you're an action taker. I know you're going to do this. So go on Google, search for flooring installers. OK, look mm -hmm. at the people with no reviews. OK, no reviews. You're thinking, why would I do that? Well, we don't want anyone with bad reviews, but we want those guys that just have a Google listing that aren't really out there online. That means that they don't know really how to market. Maybe they don't, they're not tech savvy, right? I would call yeah. five of them, introduce yourself, say, hey, we're a local contracting company here. 
And we're just wondering if you guys could use some more work. We have some customers and we're short on flooring installers. Okay. Mm. You call them, right? Don't worry about if you have jobs, bro. Because then you're going to interview them and say, hey, can we meet at Starbucks? I'd just like to chat with you for a little bit, get to know you. Okay. You're going to want to get their W9, which is, or your their I9. I think no W9 is. You're going to get one of the forms. I forget. Again, see, I outsource this stuff. I don't even think about it. I don't even know. Anyway, you're going to get that. You're going to get their general liability insurance. Okay. The, the W-9 is so you can 1099 them. Okay. That just gets their social security or their uh, tax ID number. And then the, the general liability, makes sure they have their own insurance. And then you want to make sure they have a, a workers comp exemption or they have their own workers comp policy. Okay. Those are the two things, three things that you need for, for contractors. And then from there, I say, great. Um, so what I'll do is next week, I'll call you with a job. I'll tell you the square footage. Um, I'll send you some pictures and, you know, you guys can start taking on some of our, our heavy workload. They don't need to know that you're, dude, that you're just like a one man gig. They don't need to know that. You can present yourself as a heavy hitter without them needing to know. And I don't think that's dishonest. I think it's strategic. I agree. <laughs> So from you're there, not, go ahead. Sorry, you're not lying to them. You're you're just you're no, doing things in there. Doing, yeah, but you guess what? You better match the promise. All you got to do is find one job to keep them hooked with working with you for a while. So from there, you say, okay, in two weeks, uh, I'll have a job for you. What's your schedule look like? Now you're motivated to find a job in two weeks, aren't you? You don't need a salesperson, yeah. bro. Get rid of that salesperson. I'm not saying that in a bad way. It's just you're the salesperson right now. Like, you, you know, giving yeah. up, giving up 10% is it, you're not going to make much with subcontractors. Cause you know, so you find out what they want per square foot, you know, you can ask them over the phone. I'm, I'm cool with that. Making those phone calls and say, Hey, what are you guys looking for per square foot? You know um, you know, I'd love to see if we can work together. I heard good things about you guys online. Even if you find somebody with like five or six reviews, that's okay. You know, you just don't want those companies with 50 reviews cause they don't need you. They're doing their own marketing. I wouldn't go with you. Like if somebody called me and said, Hey, Tanner, you know, I have some painting jobs for you. There's no way I would entertain that. You know, no, thank you. I've, I'm not splitting my profit with you. I don't need you. I have my own marketing, you know, but there's a lot of great installers out there that don't have their own marketing. They don't know what they're doing. So they need you, you know? So although you're getting your marketing from somebody, you're then taking ownership of that marketing, turning that marketing into a sale. And then you're selling that production, but you're also taking ownership of that production by overseeing it and guaranteeing it. You see? So what should my markup be when I uh, get the estimate? I think in the beginning, you should really just look at it like, how can I make enough to build some strength here? You need to learn how to sell. You need practice. You need to see hmm. this process through. Um, I think that you should look at it like this. If you sell a job, okay, you should aim from a subcontractor, contractor perspective in your space, you should aim for 25% gross, okay, just in the beginning. So in other words, if you sell the job for um, $1,000, okay, you should be essentially making $250 and letting them make the majority. Why? because it builds loyalty with them and they're motivated to do a good job for you. And essentially you do that with three or four guys and look at you. Now you have four subcontractor crews working underneath you and you're making 25% from each one, but they love working for you because you're paying more than Lowe's and Home Depot. Mm. You know, so don't worry about making money right now. Worry about getting better. Worry about learning the game. Worry about hearing the questions that are asked during estimates. Worry about building your reputation. Guess what? When you start selling those jobs, you're the one who's going to get the reviews. You know, you're overseeing the production. So get your feet wet there. Start there, you know, and uh, from there, you know, um, I think that that'll give you some insight that you're desperately wanting on what your next move will be. You know, I think you need a good trial run of actually generating money with this flooring thing consistently to give you the confidence to either say, you know what, I'm going to take a pause from school, which can always, you can always go back. I don't think, do credits expire? No. 
No. Okay. So no. you can always go back, you know, um, and you can always, you know, tell your mom what your plan is. And, you know, I'm sure she loves you. And, and, and at one point we'll understand, even though it's going to be tough, but you, Hey, show her the data, you know, <laughs> that's what I would do. Um, give it a shot. It's a good plan, Tanner. All right, man. I, I, I think you could do it, man. I really do. I believe in you. I'm going to do it. All right. It's already so, done. Call, it's already done. It's already done. <laughs> <laughs> All right, George, keep me updated, man. And, uh, call those contracts today. Don't be weird about calling either, man. I know it's hard making those calls come across confident as if you're already a million dollar painting, uh, not painting flooring company. And, you are offering them an opportunity, get a feel for how they sound on the phone, get a feel for how they answer the phone. You're, 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 Hey, Hey, you know, and you're pitching them, you're selling them. You already have the work. Don't worry about the work. It's out there. It's, it's just a matter of, can you be there when that work is ready to be done? And that's what your marketer is going to do for you. So don't even worry about that, you know? So, all right, man. Yes, sir. I'll catch you all right, later. Thanks brother. All right, man. All right, Talk to you soon. Drip Jobs CRM is finally here. That's right. So Drip Jobs is an automation platform for contractors, home service professionals. It's going to automatically follow up with your customers. It's going to allow you to send invoices, estimates. It's going to allow you to send out blast marketing emails to individuals based on where they are in the buying process. This software is next level. And I'm reaching out to you. You're a listener of this podcast, and I want you to be one of the first ones to give it a shot. So if you want to see what Drip Jobs can do for your business, I'd love for you to head over to dripjobs.com, sign up for a free demo, and get your team involved, and let us sit with you and show you how powerful this software is. It's going to save you time, it's going to make you money, and you're going to love the features that are built into Drip Jobs. So if you want to check it out, head over to dripjobs.com, and we will give you first priority being a podcast listener uh, to be one of the very first to try out Drip Jobs in your home service business. I'm super excited to share that with you, and I'll catch you on the next episode.